Hi, Andy Eastwood here, welcoming you to the Octopus Ukulele Academy. There's all sorts of fancy strumming you can do on a ukulele, but let's not try to run before we can walk. None of that stuff is going to happen until after you've mastered a solid, reliable, basic strumming technique. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Strumming the ukulele. It's a huge topic that we could talk about for many hours, but I don't want to get bogged down by too many details just at this stage. I want to give you the most important points and help you to avoid some of the most common mistakes that I see people making. Now, I cannot overemphasize how important it is to develop a correct strumming technique because the average ukulele player is going to make this movement millions of times. And I'm not exaggerating, you can do the maths if you like. Think how many beats there are in a song, how many songs you might play in a week, how many years you might go on playing the uke for, and you can see we're talking not thousands, but millions. So you owe it to yourself and your arm muscles to get this right. Okay, so here are six important aspects to think about when you strum. What's going on when we strum? It looks like a wrist movement, doesn't it? But actually, that's a bit of an illusion and it gets people into a lot of trouble. Take a look at your wrist joint. It's not so great at moving side to side. It moves that way pretty well, but side to side, not so good. The little tendons that move the wrist in that direction are only designed for delicate positioning. They're not intended to do any heavy work. So the minute you call upon your wrist joint to create a strumming action, you're really fighting your own physiology. If we thought this was going to come from the wrist, we better have a rethink. If we're going to make this strumming movement millions of times, it needs to be easy. So relax your wrist. Let it flop. When it's relaxed, it rests at an angle like that. OK, so that's how we'll strum. Now, keep your wrist completely relaxed and wobble your hand as if it's wet and you're trying to shake the water off. The wrist is relaxed, but these muscles are doing the work. You can feel them moving. Now, those are the biggest muscles in your arm. They're designed to do heavy lifting and carrying, and all we're asking them to do is wobble the hand from side to side. So there's no strain, it's effortless. And that's what we want. Another way I could describe this movement is like turning a doorknob. It's a rotation of the forearm, palm to the ceiling, palm to the floor. Now, if you rotate your forearm with your wrist straight, your strumming finger, the index finger, stays on one point. But if you angle your wrist, that finger draws an arc, and the more angled the wrist is, the bigger the radius of the arc. So given that we want to hit four strings side by side, a big radius is going to suit us. So let that wrist be at its relaxed angle. So it looks like a wrist movement, but actually what good players do is let the arm muscles do the work and keep the wrist relaxed. Now, in addition to this rotating movement, there is also a little bit of downward and upward movement of the forearm from the elbow joint. But don't think too much about that for the time being. Just let your arm follow the movement of your hand and that should happen naturally. Later on, when we want to add a bit of emphasis, we can use this arm movement as well, just to give the hand a bit of extra speed. But for the time being, concentrate on getting that rotation of the forearm because that's the basic action. So we've talked about the wrist. Now, what about the hand? Well, we're gonna let the index finger do the business. Later on, when we're doing fancy rhythms and special effects, we let the other fingers get involved and the thumb. But for standard basic strumming, we use the index finger. Now, a big mistake that a lot of people make is they play with the fingers all spread out and they wonder why it doesn't sound good. Well, imagine an athlete running in a race. They wouldn't run with their arms flailing around all over the place. It's not controlled. It's not balanced. It's not aerodynamic. Well, it's a bit the same with strumming. If you tuck the other fingers in, the weight of the hand is more concentrated and the strumming becomes more controlled. Just try wobbling your hand with the fingers spread and then do the same thing with them closed and you'll immediately notice the difference. So for accurate rhythmic strumming, you want a closed hand position. Guess what? When you relax your fingers, they curl. It's when you tense the muscles that they extend. So again, everything we're doing here is designed to make life easier. So have your fingers curled in. Now I would hesitate to describe this as a fist because that suggests clenching and tension, and those are just the things we're trying to avoid. But have the fingertips lightly touching the palm and then just open out this index finger a little bit so that that fingertip protrudes so that that one can get to the strings while the others can't. 
So the other three fingers are supporting the index finger on this side and the thumb, lightly touching it, is supporting it on the other side. By supporting, I mean that when it hits the strings, it's less liable to wobble around. So where do we strum? Well, generally speaking, we want to play the strings fairly near the middle. That's where we get a full sweet sound. And it's also the point where the strings are softest on the fingers. So that's another good reason to play there. If you experiment a little bit, you'll find that the nearer you get to the bridge, the harsher the sound is and the more resistance there is in the strings. So for best results, aim for round about the point where the neck meets the body of the uke. The size of the strum is very important, and yet a lot of people forget to think about it. In order for your strumming to sound neat and rhythmic, you have to obviously play on the beat. But actually, when you think about it, what we're doing is hitting the four strings one after the other. We can't physically strike all four at the same exact time. So what we have to do is get the hand moving so quickly that the four strings sound like one chord. Now, to get the required speed, of course, you have to take a bit of a swing at the strings. And I like to compare this to a golfer. Now, I don't play golf myself, but we've all seen what happens. Think of a golfer driving off from the tee. And first of all, of course, there's the backswing, and then the club starts behind the head, travels through 180 degrees, then there's the split second where you're in contact with the ball, then the follow through carries on all the way up here, and you finish behind the head again, the other side. Now, it's not all about that precise moment where you're in contact with the ball. In fact, by the time you get to the ball, you've already determined what's going to happen to it. Well, it's the same with a strum. I see a lot of people making too small a movement and struggling to make it sound good. They think the strum is all about the area where the strings are. They start about here and finish here. And all you get is that spread effect where you hear the four strings one after the other. Imagine that golfer trying to drive the ball 100 yards down the fairway, but only starting to swing about this far from the ball. It would take a lot of effort from those arms to get to the required speed. Well, of course, it's impossible. Try and start the strum about here in line with the edge of the body of the uke and end round about here, again, near the edge of the uke. Then your hand has time to accelerate before getting to the strings and slow down after hitting the strings. Because you've given yourself that space, you don't have to force it. So a bigger movement is actually less effort. <laughs> When you hit the strings on the way down, use the nail of that index finger. Not the very tip of the nail, but the big flat surface of it. Many people make the mistake of trying to hit the strings too square on. Now, of course, the natural result of that would be for the finger to bounce back again off the string. And so people then fall into the trap of trying to force the finger through, which leads to a very heavy impact, a harsh sound and a sore finger. Three things we really want to avoid. The smart thing to do is to angle the hand so that when that finger meets the G string, that's the first string that it hits on the way down, the nail is at a very shallow, flat angle so that it can glide or skim across the strings without too much resistance. That way we keep the speed up and the effort to a minimum. So far, we've talked more about the downstrokes than the upstrokes, and that's because they're kind of more important in a way. For most people, the easiest way to learn is just to think about strumming down on every beat. For example, four beats in a bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you focus on doing that, your hand automatically comes up again in between the downstrokes to get ready for the next beat. Now, when you feel comfortable playing down on every beat, gently introduce the upstrokes. Instead of missing the strings on the way up, let the fleshy part of your index finger gently brush the strings. Of course, as we have this curved finger position, what's going to happen is when the finger hits the strings on the way up, the strings are going to bend it back a little, taking the power out of the impact. But that's fine. Don't fight it. We actually want the upstrokes to be softer than the downs because we play down on the beat and up off the beat. So by playing the downward strum strong and the ups gentle, we give the music a little rhythmic light and shade. Often people tense the finger and then it catches the strings on the way up. Just relax. And my advice when learning to strum is let the upward strokes be as gentle as you possibly can. Think of them as a fill-in between the more important beats. Don't worry, we'll still hear them. So there's a lot to think about in a simple strum, isn't there? But the number one tip is Keep it loose and relaxed. Don't fight the uke. It's your friend. Enjoy it. Bye for now.